Hello and welcome to the Live Blissed Out podcast, helping demystify decision making so you can get unstuck and take action. I'm your host, Marissa Houston, bringing you another blissful episode. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional advice. And now for our listener spotlight. Anisha from the Philippines wants to know what she can do to give back to her community this holiday season. Thanks for the inspiration, Anisha. Keep listening for some really great ideas. Our topic for this episode is giving back for the holidays, and my guest is Denny Cates. Denny is an insurance consultant and advisor with Mountain Storm Insurance. She's an independent agent and can offer many solutions so you have many options. Her mission is to understand your risks and provide excellent coverage and service so you can feel safe, secure, and protected. She provides consistent support and encouragement to help you realize your dreams. For more information, visit mountainstorminsurance.com. Hi, Denny. It's really great to have you on the show today. Well, thank you, Marissa. I appreciate you inviting me. I'm looking forward to uh, continuing the holiday series talking about things that we can do during the holiday season to give back to our community because a lot of times when we think about the holidays, we always think about shopping and, oh, what's that wonderful gift that I need to give to grandma Or what's that one thing I've wanted this entire year that I didn't get for myself or for my spouse or children, for that matter. And a lot of times we are so overwhelmed with all the responsibilities and expectations of the holiday season that we forget to give back in other ways. And I wanted to talk to you specifically about this today because I know that you've been going through a very specific challenge with your family and in particular with your son Miller who was diagnosed with epilepsy. And I would like to learn more about your story and Miller's story as well as how you are giving back to the organization that has really supported you in this journey. Okay, so my son Miller is 26. He was diagnosed with epilepsy when he was 19, was a kid who never even got sick. So this was very much out of the blue. Um, He's 26 now, so it's been a seven year journey. He started out just having the, what people think is a typical seizure, grand mal seizure that they now call tonic clonic seizures. And there's so many different types of seizures and, and he very rarely has those anymore. But in the course of his diagnosis and treatment, he's gone through a couple of medications. He's been through so many different types of testing. And he actually was just approved to have a device implanted called a responsive neurostimulator. Really cool technology. I think kind of bionics and how it can learn and just the treatment that it provides gets better over time. So we're very excited about that. So I started to volunteer for the Epilepsy Foundation. And through the Epilepsy Foundation, I met Doug and Julie Hutchison, and they started a foundation called Chelsea Hutchison Foundation, which is named after their daughter, who passed away from having a seizure when she was 16. Um, She died from something called SUDEP, S-U-D-E-P, which stands for Sudden Unexpected Death in Epilepsy. Doug and Julie had never been told that that was a possibility of something that can happen for people with epilepsy. So their mission through the foundation is to provide movement monitors, video monitors, and grants for service dogs to help people and families so that they don't experience that same thing. It's been very difficult for them to do this, but in the course of, I think Chelsea died 10 years ago, they have provided thousands of these monitors. So when I first met Doug and Julie and started talking to them about Miller and what he was going through, Julie suggested a couple of things for us and eventually provided I think two different movement monitors for Miller. And his seizures had changed so that he wasn't having the the shaking that typically triggers one of the movement monitors. Okay. So that really wasn't a fit for him. We've also tried training a service dog on our own and our dog, Lena. We love Lena. 
She's not a good service dog. <laughs> She's a shepherd and just wasn't a good fit for Miller. But the foundation provides grants for people who need a service dog or families with children who might need a service dog. So the way they work the grant is that it's a certain amount of money and service dogs are very expensive. So the foundation provides towards a service dog. The people have to make sure that they're going through this checklist of things for the dog before they get that money. But they work with a lot of organizations throughout the country that train and provide service dogs also. So it's it's a wonderful thing. And if you've ever seen a service dog work with somebody who has epilepsy, it's awesome to see. I can imagine. So that that's the really the main mission of the Chelsea Hutchison Foundation. And because they helped us so much, we decided to volunteer and give back to them financially and volunteering time. And it started out with just me doing it. And then Miller joined me about two years ago. And we have a good time doing it. And I would imagine you meet a lot of people who are also experiencing what you're experiencing and able to share in what you are going through together and support each other. Yes. Um, one of the other things that the foundation provides is um, they award trips to families to something called Epilepsy Awareness Day at Disneyland. And we went last month, actually. I think they had 20 families. Oh, nice. And they awarded Miller a trip also. And because he's looking at having this device implanted in December, he was able to actually talk to three different people who already have this device. And it was awesome. Because they can give him their experience, or at least help him understand what that's like. Yes. But it was also good for him to see so many other people who are dealing with this. And a lot of them are children. So it is a little different with Miller being an adult, you know, to kind of think, well, I'm kind of alone in this. And then to realize, oh, I'm really not. There are a lot of adults who struggle with this, whether they're struggling with their medications and side effects or they're struggling to find treatment, that there are other people who've gone through eight days of sitting in a hospital room with electrodes in your brain. Yes, which he's had to do recently to pinpoint the area that is really impacting him so that they could figure out what the best options were for him specifically. Yes, he did a great job. You know, it was very trying to sit for eight days with very little movement. Basically, you're staying on a hospital bed. But the result of it was that we found out exactly where his seizures start and that they were able to find this course of treatment that in the long run is really going to help him. Yes. And the fact that we have better alternatives now than we ever had before is also very helpful because I can imagine even 50 years ago, a lot of what's available now was not available then. Right. So it only gets better, but it's still difficult for somebody to have to live with a diagnosis that has potentially no real cure, but can be controlled better. Right. And and hopefully these tools are going to do that to give him a better quality of life. It's a challenge for, you know, as an adult to not be able to drive and right now is not working. So, you know, not providing for himself and being very dependent on other people to get around and how limiting that is to your your independence. Yes. It's a different life. It is. It's a different yeah. way of living and you have to adjust to different things that you basically never even gave a thought to before. And he had been able to drive because he you know, started driving at 16 and had his first seizures at 19 and then didn't have another one for 16 months. And so the, after the first seizures, we thought, oh, he doesn't have epilepsy. You know, what are you talking about? He never gets sick. And then when he had the second set of seizures, we thought, oh, yeah there is something wrong and we need to, you know, get him to a neurologist and start taking a course of action and finding out what that is, who, who provides it. And it's been a very eye-opening experience. It's a new world for sure. There are a lot of families out there that are going through what you're going through. And during the holiday season, we always think of the typical thing that people tend to do, which is prepare for people to come to your house and cook a big meal and make sure that you have enough presents for everyone. But I think that a lot of times we lose sight of the other things that happen around us because we're so overwhelmed by the Christmas parties and all the obligations. I wanted to talk to you specifically, given the fact that you've been going through this and you are part of an organization that has been really good to you and that you wanted to give back to as well. I wanted to talk to our listeners about some ideas that we could share with them that may help them give back to organizations that perhaps have helped them and their families, as well as how we 
we can give back even to our community and to just people in general around us in different ways that are a little more significant than just going shopping. So let's talk about one of the first things on your list that you wanted to share with our listeners. Well, I think one of the easiest things to do, because so many of us shop at Amazon, is to participate in Amazon's program called Smile. So if you go to smile.amazon.com, you can sign up for, I'm sure there probably are thousands of organizations on there now. Chelsea Hutchison Foundation is one of them. So of course, I recommend you use that one. And I've signed up for that. And I didn't know about Amazon Smile. When you told me, I immediately signed up. So it's wonderful because when you do buy anything there, a percentage goes back to the organization. Yes. And sometimes if you forget to go to smile.amazon.com, if you just go to amazon.com, you'll get a prompt that says, oh, do you want to go to the Smile site? And so it's very easy to just click on that link. You stay on the same page, basically, but I don't know, internet miracles happen and then you're on the, the Smile site. And I don't know that how much the foundation gets from that. I think Julie has said it over the course of a year, I think it was $1,000. But that provides several movement monitors for families or video monitors, which is huge. Yeah. And so, as I said, there are lots of different foundations that you can sign up for. And so Amazon has a recurring count of how much they, through this Smile program, have donated to organizations around the world and it's 145 million dollars so that is a lot of money a lot of little extra money right and it's probably just a few cents at a time yes but that's huge and it's a really easy way to do that yes you don't have to do anything special or different other than pick the organization that you'd like to contribute to and do your normal shopping right So it's wonderful and easy. What's the next thing we've thought about that we can share with the listeners? Well, it's funny to to shift from talking about Amazon, but I think one of the things that really helps is to shop local and to shop at local businesses. And sometimes there are things that you maybe can't find locally and therefore you need to shop online. But I recently found out about a company that makes all kinds of different flavored popcorns. And I think, you know, it's a really easy, small thing to do so that I may give that to some of my clients clients or some of my business associates and would go to this little shop down in Parker, Colorado and get some things from them. They're going to love it. It's going to help them a lot. And it means something to me that I've been able to support a local business. And it's even beyond that. I was at a networking event the other day and a lady that I know is a wonderful masseuse and she's offering gift certificates. There are people who offer services that are unique, perhaps personalized photo albums or Mm -hmm. different things that we don't even think about outside the box and a lot of times we just do things last minute and go shopping for just oh that looks good I'm gonna grab that put it in the cart at least I'll have something to give but we can give very unique things if we really focus on small businesses and the offerings that they have that are outside of the normal that we're used to yes and and I think that the gift certificate idea is great I have a friend who is a portrait photographer and she loves to do that during the holidays is to get you know maybe it's you need to do something before the holidays if you want to give a family portrait to grandma and grandpa for the holidays but you know let's say you're here in Denver where it's snowy and cold in the winter time and you want to have a nice springtime picture well pre-order or pre-purchase the photography session and set it up with her later and then maybe as part of that then you're going to put that into a photo album that tells a story well I have a friend who does that too and she does gift certificates to make these basically beautiful coffee table books Exactly. And I know, Danny, that you love to quilt. And when you quilt, you need supplies. And so imagine if you spend your time making a special, perhaps family heirloom quilt or just something really special for a member of the family. And now you go to a local store and maybe you'll buy all of your fabric or your threads or whatever it is that you want to put together for the quilt. So now you're supporting a local business, but then you're also doing something really special for a family member. It's a one of a kind gift that nobody else will receive. Right. So there's so many out of the box ideas that we can implement to give back. What's the next on our list? Well, I think this time of year we get cards 
from people, which is wonderful. Yes, especially it is. I've got several friends that you know I've known since high school, which was a very long time ago, and I get their annual Christmas card with a picture of them and now the kids and the grandkids. And I think that's wonderful. It is wonderful, especially since these are people a lot of times you don't hear from mm-hmm. all year except that one time. Right. And I think through social media, in some ways we're able to keep in contact with high school friends. I live a thousand miles away from where I went to high school. So we are able to keep connected with people and see some of those pictures, but it's still something nice to get in the mail. But I think something else that's pretty easy to do is actually call them. What a novel (laughs) idea, right? It's calling people. Call it. And if you get a voicemail, that's fine. Just leave a voicemail. Say, hi, this is, you know, Denny. Haven't seen you for a long time. Just wanted to let you know I was thinking about you. Right. And And say, hey, it's the holidays. You know, it's a time of year when I'm so grateful for everybody that's in my life. And you're one of those people. And I just wanted to let you know, brighten somebody's day for seconds of your time. Right. Seconds. And it doesn't cost anything. And it's something that that could be very valuable to that. But you don't know what they're going through. That's right. Don't you feel like when somebody reaches out to you, whether it's through a phone call or a card, it was at the right moment? Like Mm -hmm. you really just needed that. And all of a sudden you get it. It's amazing how the universe works. Yeah. And I think people who maybe haven't gone through some health struggles or family struggles think, oh, that's not any big deal. I would tell you as a 19-year cancer survivor, when I was getting cards, it made a a huge difference. Absolutely. It means a lot. And a lot of us are also dealing with struggles that nobody knows about. Mm -hmm. Because we won't say it, we feel embarrassed, and we put on a good happy face and try to show people that everything's fine, but people don't really know what you're going through. And so it's that little action that you can do to brighten up somebody's day. It just means so much to the person that's receiving it because they feel that you care. And that's really what it boils down to. It's just knowing that somebody out there cares and is thinking of you. That makes all the difference in the world. You know, I've been hearing recently about, I'm going to say recently, I've been hearing it for a long time, but more in the last couple of days from different things that that friends of mine have posted on Facebook about gratitude and how it can really change your your physiology Mm -hmm. and, and change your brain and make you feel better and change your endorphins and those wonderful things. So the idea of just being grateful. And, and I actually am a person who prefers Thanksgiving to Christmas. Yes, so. I love Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes. So I, I think that's definitely a time for family um, and friends and just for being grateful and letting people know that you are grateful for them. But, you know, maybe sitting in your office and you just think, oh, I don't have time to call that person or write a card. Just write a little note and put it in a little gratitude jar and just say, hey, I'm grateful for Dawn. And then maybe sometime later you could call that person or send them a card. And sometimes you can even collect your little gratitude inserts in the jar and then mm-hmm. lay them all down and then reflect on everything that has happened to you throughout the year that's one way to do it Mm -hmm. and then the the whole point of gratitude is to express it because if we're not either writing it down or telling somebody that we're grateful and we're internalizing it yeah we may be internally grateful sure there's nothing wrong with that but sharing it is so much more powerful right sharing it verbally even if you're writing it down if you have a gratitude journal then it's getting another sense involved which helps to just deepen the meaning of that that's right And that's something I have done before. And now talking about this with you makes me realize I need to do more of that. (laughs) Yes, because it does. It reaffirms Mm -hmm. what's in your mind. You know it's there, but a lot of times we just get so overwhelmed with life. Right. Mm -hmm. And we just need to reaffirm it. And by writing it down or sharing it with somebody and, and just telling somebody even that you care about them, it's such a wonderful feeling because you're giving, but you're also getting at the same time. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. So it does go both ways. Yes, it, it sure it, Yes, does. you're making that person feel good, but then it also makes you, you feel, good feel good too. Right. Oh, this is one that I think is very easy to do is giving of your time. Years ago, I decided that charity begins at home mm-hmm. and that it should be done by individuals and businesses and organizations. And I think we could definitely make the world a much better place if people actually did that. And so I decided to give of both my time and my money when I can. I have a friend who said that for him, he at different times in his life could either donate time or donate money. And he decided whatever it was, let's say it was harder for him to donate money. That's what he would do because it was more of a sacrifice for him. And when he got to a point where he was making more money, but he had less time, then he decided, look, I need to give up my time because that's a a sacrifice for me. That's a good point. 
It's so. a very good point. And either way, you're giving back. And whether it's going to a senior community mm -hmm. and letting them know that they're not forgotten, that there's people out there that are still thinking about them and care about them. Whether it's going to a shelter and petting a little animal and spending some time with them because they don't have a home right now. I mean, there's so many people in communities that need love and support mm -hmm. all year. But right. particularly during the holidays, I think people feel it even more because everybody knows it's a time of celebration and love and giving and thanking and they want to be a part of that. Right. So if there's anything we can do to give back that way locally, a lot of these things when you're giving your time, chances are you're going to be doing it in your local community, then it really does make a difference. Right. I, just going back to what I found was that I enjoy this a lot. I mean, I probably volunteer 16 to 20 hours a month for Chelsea Hutchison Foundation, and it makes me feel good. And I've found that I enjoy doing it, and I schedule it and go and help them, and I feel great about it. And it's fun, too. We've yeah. met a lot of different people, and now millions joins me and so it's gotten him out of the house and helps him feel good that he's helping other people and that those people in turn help him yes it's a community so, of people right you make new friends and help each other I mean, it's a wonderful feeling i would encourage people i think sometimes at least maybe this is just the world that i'm in right now money sometimes can be an easy thing to donate you know say oh this organization needs 25 dollars. here's 25 dollars, and i'm sure they appreciate that but they may be need the actual physical help of someone there to staff a booth or staff a table i used to to volunteer for Susan G. Komen Foundation. And I did the like nine health fair events or other types of health fair events. And so I would just have a table that had materials on it and people would come up and ask me questions about breast cancer, or testing and resources available. And I enjoyed doing that because then I could just help somebody at a time when they were really down and needed some help. Which ties into what you were talking about, which is the foundation bingo that you <laughs> participate in. And I am one of those crazy people that loves bingo. Bingo. And part of it is because I grew up playing bingo with my mom. Right. She loved it. And every time she wanted to go, she would ask me to join her and we'd sit there and punching all the numbers. And it was just an enjoyable time with her. And it's just a great memory that I always have. And so and I didn't get to do it very often. So when I did, it was a special occasion. And so when you told me about the bingo event, I went. Right. And I had such a great time oh, just good. sitting there you know, listening to all the numbers. <laughs> it was bringing back all those memories. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you're donating because right. when you buy those tickets, you're giving back to the organization. Right. So it's another way to give back and still do something enjoyable. And so mm -hmm. the reason we're talking about that is because there are probably a lot of events that foundations are offering out there. It could be anything like ice skating or watching a movie or, or just doing anything fun. And every time you participate in those things, you're not only celebrating with the community and with your friends and family, but you're giving back. So it's right. a win-win for everyone. I just recently got a notification that one of the high school performing arts programs was having an evening at Chick-fil-A, although I know other restaurants do it too, where, you know, if you go in on Tuesday between four and six or whatever the designated time is, then they'll donate a certain percentage of their proceeds to this organization. Well, that's how easy is that? You're yeah. going to eat anyway. Yeah. So if you go there and then you're going to help support this local organization. 100% agree. And speaking of that, you could even initiate your own. Like mm -hmm. the other day, I think I was, I'm trying to remember, oh, it was um, Panda Express and they mm -hmm. had a little sign that said, if you want to start your own fundraising, talk to us. Oh, so cool. I would imagine you could say, hey, maybe your company or even a community group that you're a part of, you could all pitch in and say, hey, we want, you know, we want to invite this many people. We're going to do a fundraising and then everything that we get is going to go to this charity. So there's a lot you can even organize on your own if you wanted to. But right. since there are so many events out there there's not a lack of them right. you can just go and since like you said we're gonna eat anyway so why not go and be a part of the group and give back right it's just a great way to do it without any fuss really it's easy right absolutely oh here's a good one it's pay it forward right mm-hmm yeah, so that's an easy thing to do where I don't drink coffee, but let's say you're at Starbucks. Yeah, but you drink tea, don't you? <laughs> I do. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and you leave an extra $10 and say, hey, you know, I should apply this to the person behind me. And that happened to me once a year or so ago. 
I thought, oh, that's really cool. And so then I did it too. So basically that part of that paid for what I was getting. And then I gave the extra money and just kept going down the line. Well, that's it's an easy thing to do. Oh, it's so easy. And I'd heard of it, mm-hmm. but I thought it's never going to happen to me. Right. And the, it only ever happened once. And I'll remember so well because I was at a Pete's Coffee mm. and I was in line. It was a long line. And I finally get there and I'm ready to pull out my money to pay for my drink. And the lady goes, no, it's taken care of. And I'm like, well, what? <laughs> and I, I just I couldn't wrap around my head that somebody mm-hmm. had paid for me and I couldn't find the person because they just disappear. It's like, mm-hmm. oh no, that person over there, they're gone. <laughs> yeah. So you can't even say thank you. So you definitely give back. So I gave mm-hmm. back as well. So you're right. You don't necessarily get to keep it, but it's mm-hmm. kind of one of those things that you're just letting the next person know, hey, and if maybe they're having a rough time and they can't right. afford that drink, they don't have to pay it back. They can pay it back another time if they want to. Sure. And if not, it's great because we're not doing it for any other reason than to be nice to somebody else and that's the whole point so whether it's getting like five dollar gift cards or leaving something on a table unexpectedly Mm -hmm. you know what Danny even opening the door for somebody it's incredible how thankful people are like I see people with big packages Mm -hmm. And right away, I open both doors, you know, so yeah. those French doors, I open them up and they're just shocked. Mm-hmm. Wow, that was so nice. And that was no big deal, but it's just courtesy, being aware of the people around you to say, I want to help. How can I help right. in little ways? Or holding the door for a woman pushing a stroller. Yes. Or I have a, a dear friend whose husband has a, is in a wheelchair and I've traveled with them. I know what a struggle is for them. Oh, yeah. So seeing somebody in a walker or a wheelchair or something, just stand there for a couple extra seconds and hold the door for yes. them. It's, it makes a huge it difference for them. It makes a huge difference for them and they remember it. They really do. It's those little things. Imagine how the world would be if all of us just did little things like that every single day and pass that on. We could stamp out all the other stuff that, right. that's not so nice. Bring more niceness to the world, especially in the holiday season. That's what we all expect or hope for. But imagine if we can do that all the time. And these types of things we can definitely do all the time if we oh, wanted absolutely. to. Yeah. And then the last one here is oh well thanking your service providers the people who help life continue every day <laughs> so right. the the mailman the the garbage collector delivery drivers that's an easy thing to do so easy just tape a gift card inside your mailbox and write to the letter carry now of course where i live i only have and there's not a lot of other houses around so they would definitely get it i guess if you were in a different neighborhood maybe that would it might be different but i've heard ideas of just getting a little basket maybe from the dollar store and then putting some bottled water with a few snacks chocolates and Mm -hmm. chips or whatever with a little card that says hope your holidays are happy thank Mm -hmm. you for your service for us or whatever it's the thought they're so grateful that you did something nice for them it doesn't have to be a big deal and you and I are both part of networking events and now is the time of year where everybody wants to give so we have to give money like they're always Mm -hmm. asking for money we all need to chip in a certain amount or whatever so yes there's that part where that may not be as rewarding like you were saying right we're being told as part of the group you should give it's mm-hmm. going to be for a good cause great but I think there's something that's wonderful and I'm glad we're doing that but I like doing other things from just the thoughtfulness standpoint right. and you can balance both even you know talking about um, service providers so you're at a restaurant most of us generally tip but maybe you can leave an extra in cash and I know a lot of people don't have cash anymore but there are banks you can actually still get cash and tip the bill, but then leave an extra $10 for the server or $5 or however much, that makes a huge difference for them. Yes, they might be able to get their children a little extra over the holidays because everybody spends extra on the holidays. Right. It's just how it goes. So every little bit counts. And then maybe they can say, oh, well, I, you know, I'm going to share this with the, the cook or the bus boys or do they still call them that? I don't know. I, but. I think they do, but I'm not sure to be honest. This might not be politically sure correct. Say, <laughs> bus person? Yeah. <laughs> The busser, the, <laughs> the busser, yeah. Hmm. So, but you know, just things like that, and and I mean, I guess you could even get into the fact of letting that person in in front of you when you're driving, yes. being, being, being courteous. courteous. Oh, wow, that's a really good one. Um, that makes my day. I do that all day long. I really am very conscious when I'm driving to let people through. And mm-hmm. I can't tell you how grateful they look. They almost look shocked. Like, yeah. are you kidding me? But it's just something I enjoy doing. And it would be nice every once in a while if somebody did it for me. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, you get the, the wave with all the fingers yes. instead of just selective ones. right? Or the non-wave at all. It's like, well, I deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Get out of my way. But it still feels good mm -hmm. to do something nice. So again, the message really that we're trying to share with everyone today, in our conversation is there's so many ways to give and there's right. so many ways to do good. And when you do good, you feel good. And it's just something that keeps giving back. Right. And that's the spirit of the holiday season is to give back, to put smiles on people's faces and to let everybody know how much they're appreciated. And hopefully you'll feel appreciated too in return. I think that's important and to me I, to get away from all the commercialism yes. of seeing that, you know, Christmas now starts before Halloween. Oh, yes. And uh, <laughs> yes. I'm, maybe I'm just actually a, a curmudgeon, but... I just, I don't like that. Yeah. I, I think there's so much more to, you can actually do to help someone instead of just the, the commercialism and buying gifts and having dinner with friends and family, I think is very important. Going to those holiday parties, I think that's, that's a lot of fun. It's, you know, what, to people. your point, Denny, it's making memories. Right. It's making memories. But let's say your grandma sent you a gift. Would you rather have your grandma around? Mm -hmm. Or would you rather have the gift? And I think most people would say, I want to see grandma. Mm -hmm. And so there's nothing to replace that memory because we're only here for a short amount of time in this world. And we want to have those wonderful memories that can never be taken away that we can always share together and appreciate. So again, balancing things because yes, people love to get gifts and enjoy the holidays and be included. And it's a tradition, but I think we need to be more focused on the other as well and balance everything out so that we can really enjoy Enjoy the holiday season as it was intended right yeah yes so thank you denny it was so wonderful for you to be here today and share your story with us it means so much well thank you for the invitation and for thinking enough of me to ask me to share that story i appreciate you denny thank you you're welcome that's all for this episode of live blissed out thanks for listening and thank you to denny cates for joining me today and for sharing tips on giving back for the holidays Please visit liveblissedout.com for access to all our podcasts and resources and subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you find value in our show, please share your feedback on my website and tell your friends on social media. Plus, if you haven't done so yet, join our Facebook community at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash LBO podcast. It's a great place to engage. This podcast is made possible through listeners like you. Thank you. So long for now, and remember to keep moving forward.